A recent video produced on this channel attracted the conventional lunacy. It also attracted some unconventional lunacy that contradicted the two short sentences and we now place atop the description of most of the videos we release. Quote, anti-evidentiary comments are discouraged on this channel. Opinions are not facts. End quote. This video focuses on habitat and especially on the rate of environmental change. I have described this information at length, repeatedly, at GuyMcPherson.com. The inability of the trolls on YouTube to accept the information suggests we should try again. I suspect we will have the same success as before. Contrary to the response so far, I keep thinking more teaching will lead to more learning. Habitat is defined and described by Linnea Hall and colleagues in September in the spring 1997 issue of the peer-reviewed journal Wildlife Society Bulletin. Linnea Hall is one of the students, one of the graduate students I worked with while I was at the University of Arizona. And this particular paper was produced at that time. And here's the definition and the description provided in the paper. Quote, we therefore define habitat as the resources and conditions present in an area that produce occupancy, including survival and reproduction, by a given organism. Habitat is organism-specific. It relates the presence of a species, population, or individual to an area's physical and biological characteristics. Habitat implies more than vegetation or vegetation structure. It is the sum of the specific resources that are needed by organisms. Whenever an organism is provided with resources that allow it to survive, that is habitat." End quote. As I pointed out in my Extinction Foretold, Extinction Ignored essay at GuyMcPherson.com, evidence indicates humans will join the annihilation of, quote, all life on Earth, End quote, as reported in the November 13, 2018 issue of the peer-reviewed scientific reports. Even tardigrades, the go-to survivor for those who deny the impacts of abrupt climate change on life, are unlikely to survive, according to another paper in the peer-reviewed scientific reports, this one from January 9, 2020. Some people believe bacteria will survive, as indicated by the commentary at the troll farm. Apparently, I need to point out yet again one of Francis Bacon's idols of the den, sometimes called the idols of the cave. Apparently inspired by Plato's allegory of the shadows in the cave, Bacon indicates in his 1620 book Novum Organum that an individual who dedicates his mind to a branch of learning becomes possessed by what he or she learns and interprets all learning in light of this knowledge. Specifically, the idol of the den is, quote, it never happened, so it cannot happen. In this case, Earth has harbored bacteria for millions of years. Therefore, according to this idol of the den, Earth will always have bacteria. And that's the same approach used by this particular anonymous troll on YouTube. Interestingly, another anonymous troll threatened to terminate his or her membership on this YouTube channel if I don't immediately apologize for removing his or her ridiculously defamatory comments. For $4.99 a month, I'm pleased to retain my integrity while foregoing the fiat currency. Actually, after subtracting the income tax I pay, it's $4.39 a month. My integrity is worth a bit more than that. All right. If the statement, it's never happened, so it cannot happen, seems ridiculous to you, congratulations. You understand the lunacy of the nonsense I put up with every single day. The rate of environmental change is hugely important. This concept is well understood by conservation biologists and apparently by few other people. The rate of change is fundamental to understanding the important peer-reviewed paper by Strona and Bradshaw in the November 13, 2018 issue of the peer-reviewed scientific reports. Ditto for the paper by Navis and colleagues in the January 9, 2020 issue of scientific reports. Here I use a simple example. 
Imagine your life depends upon you outrunning a train. The train is 300 meters behind you and you are jogging away from it. The train tracks are bordered by steep canyon walls on both sides. Your only chance is to outrun the, outrun the train. You're really wishing you had forgone those donuts you've been eating every morning for breakfast. You're no track athlete, but a comfortable jog keeps you ahead of the train for the first hour. You know that at some point, the canyon walls will give way and you'll survive by simply stepping off the tracks. The train lets out a loud whistle. You turn to look back only to see your worst nightmare. The train is picking up speed. Suddenly, the rate of change has accelerated. Rate of change is now a life or death issue. Barring a sudden change in luck, you're about to experience the wrong side of the life or death coin. In the field of evolutionary biology, the relevant hypothesis is the Red Queen from Alice in Wonderland, and it is sometimes called an evolutionary arms race. A species must adapt and evolve not just for reproductive advantage relative to others, but also for survival. Competing organisms are evolving via natural selection. If your species cannot keep up with the rate of change experienced by other species, you'll go extinct. Worse yet, if your species cannot keep up with the rate of change occurring in the environment where you live, part of your habitat, then your species will go extinct. The concept of a rapidly changing environment with species unable to keep up with the rate of change forms the basis for the conclusions by Strona and Bradshaw in their landmark paper in Scientific Reports. Specifically, they write, quote, even the most resilient species will inevitably fall victim to the synergies among extinction drivers as extreme stresses drive biological communities to collapse, end quote. Also, they write, quote, neglecting to consider the cascading effect of biodiversity loss leads to a large overestimation of the robustness of planetary life to global change, end quote. Sterna and Bradshaw are willing to admit that some life forms might survive, although they are not optimistic. Quote, even in case of astronomical catastrophes, such as the unavo unavoidable death of the sun, life could survive in peculiar habitats, such as hydrothermal vents and a rogue, seemingly desert earth wandering across the universe, could still have some tiny chance of blooming again under some lucky, and unlikely, unlikely circumstances. That's right. Earth still could have some tiny chance of blooming again. Life could have some tiny chance of blooming again under some lucky and unlikely circumstances. That's what you're betting on? Keep up or die doesn't do the Red Queen justice. The goal is not to merely keep up. The goal is to outrun species that would otherwise serve as sources of food, competitors, or predators. Keep up or die only gets you halfway to survival. The other half requires outrunning environmental change. Unfortunately, environmental change resulting from abrupt climate change is occurring too rapidly for species to keep up. I have mentioned previously and frequently the inability of vertebrates, mammals, and insects to keep up with abrupt climate change. The peer-reviewed literature concludes tardigrades are lagging. The peer-reviewed literature also concludes all life on Earth will soon die. This is not a conclusion I am happy to transmit. On the other hand, I would be remiss in not transmitting it. Failing to point out the evidence would put me in the same category as paid climate scientists, government officials, and media personalities. That category is known by the name malpractice. It's not for me. Because I do not get paid, because I will le lose no additional privilege in telling the full truth, I will continue to promulgate evidence discovered by others.